Now we have a number of other assets that we want to get into our asset box. We can do that with file, import, if we want. We're going to navigate to our video of My Favorite Things project folder and select our My Favorite Assets. Now we're not going to go inside the folder because we want to import the whole folder all at the same time. So it's importing those JPEG images very simply. When it gets to the Photoshop file with all of the different layers of our titles in there, we want to keep them separate. So instead of merging everything together, we're going to say, let's keep the individual layers. Now it's giving us an option of importing only the ones that were visible when we last saved it. But we want all of these different layers with the different backgrounds and the different text titles. You can see little miniature versions of those in there. And I'm going to say OK and import those individual layers. It creates a folder here called My Favorite Assets where you can see the nine JPEG images. I've also got my titles right here. So if we need to, we can use those. If we're able to, we want to use these individual backgrounds and intro text to build our own. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use these and then replace them with a better one later on. So how do we build this timeline? Well, we're going to start off with our intro. So you can see here with this set of PNGs that I might want to organize this a little better. This is how you can make a new bin. That's what they call folders here. I'm going to select those four and click new bin and say PNG titles. Now I may need to move those in there, so I'm going to shift click or control click or drag and click on those four and move them into my PNG titles. So if I decide not to use them, I don't have to see them. If I do, like I'm going to use right now, I can just open it up and drag it over to my timeline. So you can see here that when I move my laser pointer, you can see my intro right there. If I press the space bar, it will play that five seconds. And that's my introduction. Let's get our first category. Category one, I'm going to drag it and I'm going to show you how you can move around. You want to drop it right next to the first one. And now I've got my first 10 seconds of video. Already done. So what do we do next? Well, we've got our first category listed there. These are the first three pictures in that category. I'm going to grab all three of them and drag them over to the video to track and line it up. Notice that if your laser pointer is close by, that snapping, it'll snap too. So you may need to move this out of the way in order to be able to do that. Now clicking and dragging to select more than one is pretty easy to do here. You can also you see this blank space here. I can right click on a blank space if it's big enough and use something called ripple delete and it'll collapse it up. So now I've got one, two, three pictures. I'm going to go ahead and build the rest. That's how easy it is. I'm going to open up my PNG titles, get category number two and snap in right there. If it's not snapping, then your magnet may get turned off. When you do that, it's pretty easy to accidentally wipe out part of the previous one. Don't move it back because it's gone. Use control Z to undo the mistakes that you make. So there's snacks I enjoy. I can get my four, five, and six. Drag them to the timeline. Let me try again. Not letting me do it just yet. I did something wrong. Let me try just bringing number four over. Oh, it's the snap is off. Let me put, turn that back on. Definitely problematic, but it should jump right into place there. Number five and number six. 
I've got my third category here. And I'm going to bring in my 7, 8, and 9. Drop those on the end. Looks like I needed a little more time there. So I've got the beginnings of my video. Yes, they are way zoomed in. Please do not panic. We're going to take care of that next. Now I've done a lot of work. And I have not saved it. If it were to crash right now, I don't know how much of it has been automatically saved. So holding down the control button with my lower left pinky finger, notice this asterisk right here. When I tap the S key, that asterisk goes away. That shows me it has been saved. Much better to do that yourself. The next step is going to be to make sure that each one of these images is on the screen as much as we can. So notice right here we have our effect controls. If these are closed you can open them with the little side arrow there and having this image visible and selected I can now take this scale and scale it down. You can click and drag on blue numbers but scale is pretty easy because you can open up a nice slider. Now you can lower this until the red starts to show and then bring it back. What you can't do is go over the 100. This is forbidden. To just zoom in because you want to show something is not allowed. You're lowering the quality of your video. You can only go from 100 and the job now is to lower it to how small can it go without going too small. I'm going to look at the next one, select it, and scale this down until I see red and then bring it back. Now if you want to you can adjust the up and down and left and right to position it to a nice starting point. Let me go to the next one, scale it down. Seems like it's about the same shape. Snacks I enjoy. Let me go to the apple and maybe position it a little bit. I might not be able to go that small. I can't get the whole apple in there at the same time because of the shape of the image. So you just have to position it as best you can and not go over 100. Got the stacks with something like this similar to a book cover. I can only go down a little bit. But I can go and decide whether to show the top of the can first or the bottom of the can first. So you get to decide what the starting point is. Cheetos, same thing, very vertical. I cannot scale it down very far at all, but I can go pretty far, top to bottom. We'll start right there. Next I have my movie genre, so I really just have three left. Quickly now, scaling down, positioning it a little bit, maybe right there. Next, I'm just clicking in this time bar up here. It's like the next one, scale it down and position whether I want it at the top or the bottom. Got to choose one or the other. And one more. So this one, I'm going to scale it down that far and decide where my starting point is going to be. Maybe I don't want to zoom out quite that far. Maybe I want to make it this be the starting point. As long as that red color is not showing and you've kept it under 100, then you've got a pretty good starting point. So now when I scrub, just dragging this through, I can make sure that none of my images are showing any red, but I can see as much of it as possible. And that's that step. 